Come to Filmmakers Anonymous. That's our club. It's where filmmakers go. It's our central hub. Handheld, tripod, camera shaking. So come and join us for all your filmmaking. Nolan, Scorsese, but not Michael Bay. And if you like Twilight, then you better Amscray. Don't need MasterCard. Don't need Visa. If you don't join us, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Welcome back, everybody. We are now in week three, or episode three, of the Filmmakers Anonymous show. All right, this is our weekly podcast to discuss all things cinema. I'm Mike Woodard, the club's president, and we have a full cast with me here today. We have uh, Tyler, who's our secretary, Amber Fisher, our former president. Back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tyler, did you want to say hi? I'm sorry. <laughs> hi, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Normal, normally, we let everybody just say something, so I, I realized I skipped over you really quickly. Um, Amber's also the star of another podcast, The Super Awesome Film Show, which you can find on YouTube. Yep. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we decide to, we go on long vacation breaks. Oh, oh there you go. Maybe occasionally you can find That's the show. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also with uh, Matt Rowe, who is the CEO of Heaven's Fires Film. Well, as much as that is worth nowadays and whatnot, <laughs> until we actually finally get incorporated. <laughs> well... Hey, fancy title to call yourself. We are also joined by Brianna, a very <laughs> prominent <laughs> filmmaker <laughs> club member. And the only animator. And the only animator. I was letting you say that. Why did you give me that look? <laughs> yes, no, when you said very prominent, I'm like, prominent what? And I can, until you finish, and I'm like, prominent member, I'm like, oh, oh you that got, makes sense. Oh, you, you, gotta, you gotta single her out like that. Oh my god. <laughs> We're not even gonna get through Brianna. the intros, man. This is not gonna take place. Majorist. And, al- and also... I don't see majors anymore. Another uh, filmmaker anonymous member who you just heard, Sander. Hi. And then we're also joined by James. Hi, uh, what's up? And also, um, I did an art piece, feature, will be a feature in the pink, 40th anniversary of Pink Floyd, called Chappelle's Barbershop. Yeah, nice. that is very awesome. Like Dave Thank Chappelle? Thank <laughs> Chappelle's Barbershop. Not Chappelle, but like uh-huh. uh, C-A-P-E-L. Uh-huh. So... We thought we would talk about, um, I found an article, and this article is like a year old as I'm looking at the date now, but I just still thought it might be interesting. Um, it lists the 10 biggest problems with modern day cinema, and I, I would like to see if, if all of us either agree or disagree or what we think about each of the points. Just go through each one right. at a time and discuss it as we go. Right, basically, yeah. and, and if you have your own qualm with the modern cinema, which I'm sure we all do in some way, shape, or form. So the very first one they list is called is inaudible dialogue, and they reference here in the article they reference Inception. This article, by the way, is on from a website called Den of Geek. Who wrote it? Yeah. Um, Denofgeek dot com. It's written. I it looks like Simon, Simon Brew. Brew. Yeah, we'll Simon we'll Brew. put the link in the, um, yeah, in the we'll, commentary. We'll have the links and all that uh, for you if you watch on YouTube or you know or if you see our Facebook or stuff like that. Whoever your um, iTunes figured out. And actually, that reminds me, before we get too far, you can also find uh, Filmmakers Anonymous on Facebook. If you search UMBC's Filmmakers Anonymous, you can tweet us at UMBCFA. Um, you can also find us on YouTube.com slash UMBCFA. Please let us know what you think about the topics. We normally try to post the discussion before the podcast, and we'll even mention a few during the show. Plug, 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 plug. <laughs> <laughs> We're a plug-in hybrid. Yeah, we got plug So, I mean, so what do we all think about this inaudible dialogue? It is one of the problems with modern films. Well, and like I said, they reference I mean, in Inception. Way? Are you talking well, about, they were, like, Mumblecore? Mumblecore? That would be too, like, I, that wouldn't be, mo- that wouldn't be, like, really that mainstream. Well, I, I think... Yeah, but it's, it's considered something of modern cinema today, though. What is, what is that? It's just bullshit. That's all. <laughs> so it's so basically, it, it, just like when uh, when like you know lines are just spoken so, to a point in which that you can barely they're, hear they're, it, where they're so low. I you know, know you like know that kid from uh, Arrested Development and that other kid that played the Facebook guy. Those are like oh, just yeah. Well, yeah. I know there's, but they're like the same person. But yeah. uh, um, it's like what when they talk. And you don't uh, understand what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> that, 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 I think it's partially like that, and it's partially like. Like the example they use is Inception, and if uh, and I remember watching Inception. Sato does have a few lines that either out. either both because of his accent and because of all the background noises, it's really hard to hear sometimes what he's saying. And well, and I think they they the point that they are making in the article is that the audio is not overwritten as high as opposed to um, sound effects, explosions, well, I, or I think other a lot sort of that. Of is is lazy remixing, especially when mm. they go on home home video and DVDs. Yeah. Because 
in the movie they're mixed for 28.17 surrounds. Yeah, they're, they're mixed for the theater experience. And they don't bother remixing it for 2.0, 2.1, 5.1, 7.1. So if you're so if you're running off of your TV, then you end up with really muffled bass that blocks out all the dialogue because Poor you, you couldn't afford a 5.1 home cinema system. (laughs) Well, the funny thing is actually also when uh, movies are uh, recut for home distribution, it's it's the distributor that does the audio mixing, not the people who actually made the film because it's Mm. taken out of their hands by that point. Uh, I actually, one movie that I think is the one most prominent thing movie in my mind that was all about bad audio, there was a movie called The Killing Room. Uh, starring Timothy Hutton. That sounds and, like a pleasant movie. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, well, it was directed by the guy who did Darkness Falls. I'm not uh, sure what that. I mean, it, no. Like, but the thing is, this movie itself is good. But the problem is, the audio is so low throughout so many portions of this movie. I mean, like when they're talking full volume, you can definitely understand. But when they're whispering, I had to put on subtitles to see what they were talking about because I'm like. Because you, you're hearing all the extra noise for what's going on in the sound booth because there's there's two different story arcs happening at the same time. But I'm like, I'm, I literally was lost for half the movie. Like, when I finally went back and watched it with the subtitles again and I got what was going on, I, I do think it's a really well-made film and it's really well-paced and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, the sound does make the viewing experience a lot more difficult. And I'm... And it's, it goes beyond just passively watching a movie. There's a difference between passively watching a movie or actively watching a movie, and then there's also struggling to watch a movie because of the technical issues. Another movie I thought that had really bad sound mixing for distribution was Terminator Salvations. I mean, yeah. certainly that wasn't the amazing movie to begin with. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I watched that, and it was missing the center channel. It was? Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, you know, I I have 5.1, but I was only getting 2.0, even though this is a movie filled with explosions that really needs the subwoofer. <laughs> and it was just so I could barely hear any of the dialogue, because it was just being covered by... <laughs> well, I think that's, that should, that's probably the main issue, is just lazy, sorry, lazy, um, you know, voice, mm-hmm. like, audio recording. Though, well, like, but sometimes, though, like... A theater, though, can also be the problem. Could be also a theater. No, like you know, and and because like uh, for example, I went and saw when I went and saw The Dark Knight Rises. I was going to bring up The um, Dark Knight Rises. I thought we weren't going to speak of that. Well, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm <laughs> talking about, about audio. Um, I went and saw it in the, like midnight release, and I was sitting in the back, like right in the ba- very mm-hmm. back, and I was having trouble. Not the whole issue with like the Banes or something. Like it was a bunch of like scenes mm-hmm. with a bunch of characters where sometimes I couldn't hear mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne's thing. I couldn't see it. And so I was like, what are they saying? <laughs> and I'm like, I hope it's... I was like, this movie's really, you know, hard. Even with the explosions and stuff. And then I went and saw it again and I was at a different theater and it was fine. So mm-hmm. sometimes, like, if you go to a theater experience, sometimes it's the theater because I was like, they need to turn it up. I had a, I had a similar... Yeah, I, well, yeah, I have another example of that, like... When I saw Dark Knight Rises at theater, like I could tell that it was their speakers that were not right because during the uh, climbing out of the pit scene, like their audio was peaking to the point that it was like cutting off at their at their. Yeah. Oh, and that's sometimes cool. it's just like yeah. sometimes it's a theater, and the yeah. theater needs to be made aware of you know when you mm-hmm. can't hear dialogue and you're like, wait, I just totally missed the scene because I can't, I don't know what's happening. And then see, it's bad. And I experienced that. But when that... you get it at home too, then you know that's it's. True. It's them. I experienced that with Dark Knight Rises, yeah. and and I'm well, I don't remember specific examples beyond Bane, honestly, because the voice of perfectly. Bane was I heard Bane a little like, bit hard like, to hear. Like, and like, and the, scene, like the, scene, Bane the scene when he's in that pit and he's talking, there he's mm-hmm. talking with right. Bruce Wayne, like because it was kind of low, mm-hmm. like exactly. you know. And there wasn't any, you know, there wasn't any explosions, but it's just a simple conversation between them. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand what, what they were and, talking about. And, and, I, and I agree, and that yeah. was the problem, I, th- I thought a lot, because I wanted to hear what Payton was saying. Yeah, and, and I, I put on, like, character. the whole thing with, like, he can't hearing his voice, but, like, when I, like I said, when I saw it again, I could understand him fine, I didn't have a problem with him, you know, but during <laughs> that oh, yeah. scene, I couldn't understand what they were saying. I remember that scene, actually. I was at the um, Orange Mills Theater. That's where I saw it. Oh, okay. 
Do you arm her too, or it was like I, I, I it sounded fine to me. I mean, yeah, my, me my too, mother actually. couldn't hear parts of it, but I. It was low. It, was it wasn't like like clear like, and the um Miguel Bane talking like because his voice in itself was like noticeable. I thought it was actually too clear at points, like in places where it should have been muffled by explosions. It felt like they mixed Bane on top of everything. So yeah, the explosions sort of muffled him, but instead Bane muffled the explosion. It should be the other way around. So I mean, maybe we just, we all, maybe it is the movie, because if we're all having, maybe it was the <laughs> I, I mean, we Well, to be honest, sort of um, when I saw The Dark Knight Rises, I saw it at Benji's, and... Um, that's that's a whole other problem right there. Well, the, <laughs> well, the, I, I, of FMAM. well the, no, the thing is, though, I didn't have any problem with the sound, actually. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of you guys were, like, having, like, and especially when it came down to Bane's voice, like, I, I heard... I never really had a problem uh, hearing anyone talking. Like the, the sound itself was. I mean, maybe it's because it was coming in over the radio, yeah. and I've got a decent sound system in my car. Uh, but at the same time, like I never really had that much of a problem with it. But then going back to it, like uh, one of the things that I, I understand that uh, when it comes down to it, it's all also about the exhibition of it. Like when it comes down to movie theaters, like not. Pl- putting all, like the their sound system correct for the movie like one thing is like my my television at home uh the <laughs> i've had it for a very long time and for some reason uh it i can't get it off of mono and like it's oh. stuck on mono oh. and whatnot oh. you so, have our greatest condolences i know it's like, the thing is like no matter what i can do it's always stuck on mono and like, and like if you want to send out prayers to that well, the, well, yeah. the cool, well the cool thing is now i got myself some, some uh some surround sound speakers so that fixed that problem major- for the majority of it too. yeah but like for the longest time like the speakers were just in mono so i had trouble all the time hearing things all, especially when it got to a point where it would reach a little too high, and all of a sudden, you would literally be able to hear the sound drop down a level. You could literally, you could hear it pop and drop down a level and whatnot to fix itself. I'm like, well, great, now I can't hear it even more. <laughs> well, we're all complaining, you know, how some of the 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 theaters seem to have problems with getting levels right, and that's because they've lost all their experienced projectionists as they switched to digital. You know, they don't have a projectionist in every booth anymore. That's the Peace Senator Theater. They, uh, <laughs> they, they maybe have one or two, and they're not super experienced. They just assemble videos, and they hit play. And I think a lot of these problems are because we've lost an entire you know, profession. We really have. I mean, it's, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was thinking maybe as, as far as sound goes, some of it might not actually have... I, I'm sure most of it has to do with technical problems. I think some of it might actually be like some poor communication between like part departments in the film and mm-hmm. like, maybe people writing the dialogue and people mixing the dialogue or like mixing the sounds together aren't really like talking to each other about okay like we're talking in this room with this amount of people with like what kind of level of voice are we aiming for and how is that going to sound when like mixed together with the background noises or Luckily. sometimes like when people are like talking really fast you know yeah. sometimes they'll, they'll try to like make them talk fast like speed up the film and sometimes that kind of makes it a bit of a distraction. Well, sometimes it's, it's kind of obvious, like, uh, for example, like, getting off that, but something like, um, I'm sure was that movie, which, like, Far From Heaven. I don't know if you guys seen mm-hmm. that, but um, that's, like, mm-hmm. a probably 10-year-old like, movie or something. But, and I watched that off, like, Netflix, off my thing, and I, it was up loud enough where I could hear scenes, and then there's dialogue scenes, and I'm like, it just goes down, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I, Turning I, it up, and I'm like, I can't understand the conversation and have to go back. Like, bang! It, it's one of the biggest problems that, when I watch movies at yeah. home is that the music is so loud. It's like, it I, was, I will get wasn't yelled even at. Any music. Like, it was, a, it was well, a well, right, right. The sound see, mixing. Right, but <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying is that, like, I'll watch a movie, like, off my computer as I'm eating lunch or something. And my mom will yell at me for like you know the music's too too loud. But then, but, but then, but then I keep saying, but then I keep saying it's only loud when the music's playing. Once the music stops, the dialogue's yeah. this yeah. low. But that's, that's what, what I was that's what I was saying about the channels. Right. Your computer is two point right. and you know the 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 dialogue's always on the center channel, which computers don't have. And they this don't... was off a streaming Netflix off a regular flat screen TV with surround sound, so it was. Oh, well, I was I was talking about. So yeah, yeah but I'm saying like the well, same Nef- thing. Well, Netflix though. doesn't have super great streaming audio quality. Well, I don't know. I've heard depends. fine. Like, it, it, it really it depends. depends. It depends, but like that's depends an on the example. platform you run it off of, and yeah, that know. was an example. And then it was mm-hmm. really bad because I had just finished watching Kevin Smith's Chasing Amy, and that's the worst <laughs> audio <laughs> ever. <laughs> 
And also, I didn't like the movie. But so, <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> worst, like, like the worst audio I'd ever issues? heard. So the only reason I watched Chasing Amy is for George Carlin. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the second. Uh, <laughs> point in the article. Because we actually point. have a list we'd like to achieve today. <laughs> we, we do have a list. <laughs> we have a goal. <laughs> it might be a part two. <laughs> <laughs> it might have to be at this rate. This time <laughs> it's personal. But just okay. go back home before we change. Just go back with the uh, movie song. I part, it's a reason probably you don't like it because most of the sound. Because sound's very important in film. Podcast 2. Well, no. No, no, I didn't like the movie itself. I didn't the like the storyline. No, I didn't right. like the storyline itself. Oh, right. It wasn't anything about the sound. The sound was shit, and you could tell it was a, a small, like, indie production, but it's really bad when it's like, your sound's going out, and you nobody can hear the scenes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you saying? Right. Huh? Okay, no, no, no. Let, let's move on. Um, so the second uh, point made is the, uh, they have an issue with the mul- the idea of the multiplex. I, I don't mind and, it. It, ena- it enables greater consumption, and sure, we've lost the you know the things like the center, which if you guys aren't in Baltimore, which you probably are, because yeah. I feel like only people we know are listening to this right now. Um, <laughs> the senator is an old style movie theater. It used to be a, a I stage was in Oregon, <laughs> um, and it's it's one screen though they're building two tiny ones. But no, 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 they're building six. Six. They're making it a multiplex, and well, I'm they're keeping pissed. the main screen, right? They're keeping the main screen, okay. but they're adding like four well, extra ones matters. in there. And whatnot. Well, so it's a big screen. We're so talking, you know, big full auditorium. Oh yeah, and uh, it's got and, like six hundred seats, or like probably I know actually it's got more. It's like probably got up in like a thousand seats in the main in the main uh, movie yeah. hall. Yeah, and that's nice, but I mean, do you really lose much seeing it in a smaller theater? Sure, it enables lower brow stuff because they're able to cover their bases and have. You know, put out ten times the garbage and get the same amount of money. Well, uh, or more. When it comes down to the multiplex, like I am not. There's, I'm kind of split when it comes to the multiplex. Like the multiplex allows for greater consumption of more movies. That is true. It, it, it definitely allows more accessibility to movies. Uh, like the Charles Theater, in a way, is a multiplex because it plays several movies at a time. Uh, six but, theaters, right? I believe so. Yeah, and like in like in. And it plays indie films, which is great. But at the same time, the Senator Theater especially, uh, the last movie I remember ever seeing in the Senator Theater was Lord of the Rings Return of the King. And that movie was amazing in the Senator Theater because not only was the sound, going back to the sound and whatnot, not only was the sound incredibly well uh, (laughs) orchestrated and whatnot, but also because the screen was big enough and also that the, uh, the, 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 the way that everything was set up, that there... They were not trying to confine space just for the sake of getting the movies, like, you know, getting as many movies in there. You were watching that one movie, so all of you, like, and the Senator Theater is freaking huge from what I remember of it. It, It's all enjoying this one giant experience, and uh, I feel in some ways the multiplex kind of loses that because it's, it, it sacrifices the overall, uh, culminating movie going experience for the fact that you can see more variety uh but also if you have to really think about it back when single theater uh single theaters were pretty much the norm movies played for a shorter amount of time so they could play they did play a lot of movies but they it would only play it one at a time and they would play it for a month they didn't have it running for a couple months at a time you would see right. it it would run for like a month and then it would switch to another movie and then go after that so i actually think that because of that setup it also convinced people to go to the movies more because you weren't able to catch. You were, you were going out every. Yeah. Um, it's like, and you weren't yeah. able to catch like that movie. Like you know, I can see every that next month or whatnot. Out. Like yo, this right. is the movie and that came and out. Especially because now we have like those set, those sub theaters where they're like cheaper. Yeah. And, they show, and they show the uh, and they're right, exactly. and they're poorly maintained too right. because like yeah. um, and they're very small, well, very small. One of the like, uh, theaters the one that I <laughs> one of the theaters that are, is really awful actually is the the theater in the mall in Westminster. In, huh. And whatnot. So, yeah. you, you're, we're, we were both went to the same high school, didn't we? North I went to Carol? North Carroll, yeah. Okay. That, 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 <laughs> I know what he's there you go. That, that, that despicable, horrible place. Uh, but like 
the, the, the movie theater in Westminster, it's, uh, so, it's, it's awful. Yeah. It's really awful. Besides the fact that they have rats and shit like that. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen them yet. Fun. Uh, <laughs> one ran across my foot once. Oh, boy. Uh, but, um, you have rabies now. The, um, That's the, why you drive up to Hanover. Oh, Hanover, <laughs> Hanover actually, like, I, I like Owings Mills Theater. Uh, also, I'm a very big fan of... Like, even though, like, the Senator Theater doesn't really have this in the way, but the Charles Theater does, I like theaters with stadium seating, because if someone taller sits in front of you, you can still see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. That, like the AMC. Like, yeah, that, that's, and that's exactly, the Charles right. Theater does this, the AMC theaters do right. it. Like, the one in Westminster, they're all yeah. straight. Well, well, and that and is all those sub-theaters, it's because... The, I mean, I guess they just don't have well, the Well, to save the vertical state. Right. Save the and vertical also, space. um, to Clay Square Mall, too, I've been mean, Baltimore County. They the same way flat. I hate that. So. I haven't yeah, been to security it's... in forever. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. It's not worth I it. I did my driver's test there. I did my driver's, test there. <laughs> did my driver's <laughs> test there. One good point that the ar- that the article made, so I just, I you like might. the comparison. They I'm compare it to, um, basically how the way uh, cable television is presented, basically, yeah. where you have so many options and yet surprisingly very little to watch well, exactly. as yeah. uh, he sa- states in the article well i had i had the i went to la this summer and i had the awesome experience to, to see a movie at the grom's chinese theater oh wow, wow. Nice. which was amazing <laughs> like i had like i got into it for free because the, the guy at the door was like because new so we got to sneak in but um uh it the the movie was crap because we got into the watch but um <laughs> Just the theater itself, because of the history within stuff, I was just, like, looking around, because it is the most amazing theater that I've ever been in my entire life, and I was, like, taking pictures and shit. They have a curtain that opens, and then they have lights and curtains, and the lights, like, so it's like amazing. The senator. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I mean, the senator's great, but the Man's Chinese Theater is probably ten times has its own <laughs> thing to it. It's like it's a not falling like, apart version. Th- just when you look at it, you're like, this is the That'd most beautiful, good. awesomest thing. For somebody who appreciates film mm-hmm. and everything like that, it's it's amazing. And it has, it's got, you know, the flat, so if somebody tall sits in front of you, you're fucked. But it's got another balcony <laughs> oh, no. and everything. The only thing is, like, with what we're talking about is multiplex mm-hmm. compared to that, is I know, I don't know how long it is, but there are, it's technically a multiplex theater. Mm-hmm. You have the big main theater, which they have all the big premieres and that can sit, I don't know how many fucking lot of people. <laughs> and then if you go off to the side, they built what is now where they have the Academy Awards and stuff, which, mm. is, the, wow. which is now the Dolby <laughs> Theater, which is a fucking mall. <laughs> um, but they have like seven other small, like I think regular like multiplex type mm-hmm. theaters off to the side, but then they have their big main one. But when you go in, you... See the big main one? There is no, like, doors or something to go into it. It's, like, curtains there. Um, but, like I said, like, there's mm-hmm. good and bad things. I appreciate the, mm-hmm. the you know, the single theater because it's classy. Right. It's... Uh, and it's just, you don't get that with, like, how it was a grand day, you know. And it's mm-hmm. sad because there's some there were some really it, amazing theaters that it... they torn down or just right. are just sitting there because nobody wants it to. Makes it, some... it makes it more immersive and as if, like, the movies are grander than, you know, it, your regular I, well, because yeah. I, I think that one of the reasons because of that is because uh, if you have one solo, solo theater and whatnot, they spend more time putting more effort into the presentation of the movie than they would a multiplex because they've got like six or seven movies or actually some yeah like you know mm-hmm. some movies some cineplexes are like unbelievable yeah. like you know literally like dozens does 24 theaters yeah, yeah. and like yeah, that like, so the thing is like you have so many theaters to maintain it's more about Setting the reel, getting it done, like in real. I'm a '90s kid. I grew up with quantity quantity over quality. Exactly. Quantity over quality. And I would, I would actually like. I mean, I kind of like what they did with the Grom's Chinese Theater because I mean, it is only one, and they have so much shit going on over there. But Mm -hmm. I kind of like where they have the one main big classy theater because you know, like everybody's doing like midnight screenings, like something like that, where you would have like two or three big giant like. Like, mm-hmm. like you know, multiplex people. You could put it one, all these people in one fucking theater, right? Instead then, of like the eight and then you lines. have all those other and <laughs> which is like you, you know each week most of the time, you know you have for the weekend you have that one big movie playing that you know you're gonna get everybody to play. So you just mm-hmm. put that put that movie playing in there and then play all the other you know movies and the other ones. Right. I I kind of like that, but I know everybody doesn't. You know, I think it's more if if 
you know, if you're a film person that kind of appreciates the history of it and stuff and kind right. of see, like, it's kind of nice and classy compared to, you know, everything's right. going digital, but but I, right. but, the, but it's have, sad anyway because uh -huh. it doesn't even matter with the multiplexes because in a, there are, there's already problems with people just getting people to come to a multiplex. That's, and that's true. So in, like, 20 years, who knows, they'll be like, well, how does it feel about, you know, <laughs> going to a theater compared to just sitting on your ass at home? <laughs> with, your, with your virtual reality glasses, which are just as big. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next topic now. Um... The next one that they state, um, too many toys for filmmakers to play with. I disagree with that. And I, I think... It depends I'm, on the toy. Yeah, right, it, exactly. It depends on the toy. Because if from what I'm deferring, referring from the article, it's like, you know, they say, like, you can make the movie Skyline, you know, basically with a computer, which, you know, you could have never made, you know, years before. Or because of CGI, and I think he's referencing the fact of CGI and the fact that right, films but, aren't made. But Skyline, um, what made Skyline bad wasn't the fact that it was CGI. It was everything else. It was okay, everything okay. else. Oh, okay, and that's fine. Well, <laughs> that was fine. I don't think that's the point so that he well, to be honest. About, are you talking about, like, um, I, I get the, like, special effects equipment, but I was just talking about, like, the different cameras, because we also have, like, does, like, 3D technology count? Yeah, I think they're talking like about, that? like, all I, the new I, things. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. And... they're talking about, in general, you know, like, they're saying that with the all the uses of um Basically, toys. anything that James Cameron created <laughs> yeah, is what we're talking about. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see, mean, I, I don't, I think, any like, anything it can be used responsibly. I mean... 3D has Moderation. to be 3D has yeah. to be as well. Moderation. I mean, we saw, you know, the 80s was an example of bad 3D. It was Dude, the fifth oh, example, example of bad 3D. Well, is bad. It, it doesn't matter. And I disagree. I disagree. You can use 3D well. For example, uh, the Avengers used 3D pretty subtly and pretty well. I think my uh, Tron Legacy used it pretty subtly and pretty well just to give depth to some we, of the We saw scenes. Tron Legacy yeah, in did. 3D. Amber, I think we went on a, uh, we filmmaker's, went on a filmmaker's trip. Thing, yeah. down One to, like, scene Columbia and that Mall. annoyed me, and that's um, at the end of the movie when Clue is trying to capture Sam, and they're on the they're on the tower <laughs> at the end. Spoiler alert. Um, I, the movie's like a year old. Well, people. no, come well, on. No, we, know, we know that Clue was trying to capture Sam. Now it's a spoiler, and he sticks his head into the thing. He's like, Rrr! and you guys can't see that, but I. <laughs> but um, but and it's the classic '50s popping out of the TV thing, and I was like, yep, this 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 just ruined the 3D of this movie because before it, it had just been good depth. Right, and and see that's well, that's the thing is that a lot of films that intend to be in 3D will do that old 50s trick where they film it specifically for 3D. I saw Saul, the last Saul film, and I didn't watch it in 3D because I really you don't watch it. You can't see this, but I just 3D. rolled my eyes. Oh, and that's fine. You guys can all react that way. But I feel like, I, but, like, feel like uh, 3D should just be with horror movies because half the time the horror movies are shit and the 3D only makes them a little bit fiction. more... Right. Yeah. Well, wasn't that, well, isn't that the what purpose 3D was of uh, Valentine's Day? Well, yeah. Wasn't that the... Or My Bloody Valentine 3D? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. My Bloody Valentine yeah, 3D, I saw that. Like, that. I didn't want to see it. That. The only thing I... I liked about it was that I didn't fall asleep because the 3D kept me awake. <laughs> but um, 3D has a purpose, and that's to immerse you well, in a world. All right, all right. This is what I have to say about 3D. Okay, this is the only thing I have to say about 3D. My personal opinion, when it comes from a technical point of view, 3D is impressive. When it comes from a filmmaking's point of view, my personal opinion is that it's lazy filmmaking. Yes. And, and no, no, this is yeah, 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 this I is agree. my reason for it. If you have, if you watch a good film, if you watch a film with a really good sense of mise en scène, you get drawn in regardless. I think that 3D is used. I mean, like I understand people who want to experiment with different technologies. That's yeah. why uh, Martin Scorsese used 3D in Hugo. Yeah. But the thing is, though, uh, 3D is a cheap. Well, no longer it's no longer cheap anymore. Yeah. But the thing is, like, it, in, in a broader sense of the word, it's a cheap way to try to get your audience engrossed in a film, and that makes you you forget about other elements of the movie. Like, in my personal opinion, like one of the best movies of the last decade is Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. And that movie is so immersive because of how well it's presented, how well it's shot, how well it's acted. Everything about that movie. It makes you completely immersed on its own merit. If they decided to throw 3D into any of that type of stuff, it would have ruined it for but me. But are you saying the trench run in Star Wars Episode Four, 3D would have been? Exactly. I would never. I, I would actually, never watch no, it. I, I, I would never watch. No, I'm not talking about going back and redoing. It. I'm saying if the technology had been there, 
Would you have complained about that, or would you have said, "Wow, that really added to the effect"? That I really would, immersed see, me. Aren't they? Didn't I, they I just mean, bring like the Star Wars into th- to three D? They, they're right, doing it one by one is, now. Yeah, I'm but, talking about like if you like if it hadn't been like a money money grubbing thing. But it's always been a money grubbing yeah, thing ever that, since. That, the, that, ever that since is because they can charge is. extra for tickets. It, it now. first was uh, created in the '50s for sci-fi films, like you know. Uh, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers and stuff like that. Like, you know, it came, like, them, the one about the giant ants and stuff like that. It was always a gimmick to just get B-movie. people to drop in. It's just a yeah. B-movie. And see, yeah. and see here's, the, here's what I was getting to with my saw point, is that you can see shots that are specifically made just for the 3D. When well, yeah. like, like, coming at you well, well, right, right, right. Like, there's a blood. scene near the end where the main, where the main villain, you know, the guy who ends up being the main villain... Yeah. Throws the saw like yeah. oh, into into a hallway, it's like oh, like, and, and you see it, you know, uh, direct directly in the middle of the screen, coming mm-hmm. right at right at you, and you know that shot would not have been in there if they weren't filming it for three. But that's yeah. why you know that bad. Bad. it's when they do that. And I agree with you, Mike, because when I saw my boy Vanta. I did mm-hmm. not sign in 3D. I wanted to attention, but part at where the he time, throws the pick and it's a fire. But but, but that know. movie is supposed to be seen in 3D yeah. because right. isn't it a satire? Pretty well, not maybe a satire, it's, but isn't it's, it's a remake of an 80s yeah, right? It's, it's of a Canadian horror like slasher film, and the only and but like that's when like the trend of 3D started coming back. Yeah, yeah. And, but that was that early movie, 2000s. But that movie seriously is. It's not a good movie. It sucks. And the only thing, like, and people are like, well, we don't have it in 2D here. Well, then don't see it because it's not right. worth it. Like, right. it's, it's, but and even though, like, even, like, the ticket price for 3D, mm-hmm. still, like, for that movie, not worth it. It's, like, 20 bucks to see, like, a, a stupid horror movie with that. The other, the other problem but is. But that's what I'm saying makes 3D bad. When, when they, when they do shots specifically yeah, 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 for yeah, 3D. Yeah. talk over each other. <laughs> what makes the 3D bad is when they do the shots specifically for 3D. A movie can be well done with 3D if they don't say, oh, it's 3D, let's add all these cool shots. If they just use 3D to enhance the story that's already there. I can't, my, I guess you might have, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm uh, in a way, I'm, I'm a purist when it comes down to filmmaking, because the thing is, filmmaking is, it, it's, it's, it's not the fact that it's always been 2D, the fact of the matter is, it goes to the fact that, it's not supposed to be that you're supposed to be in the movie. I can't stand that. If you are drawn in by the experiences of the experience of, the, of watching the movie alone, that means that you're watching something that is highly engrossing. If you're drawn in just for the fact that it's in 3D, then it it's 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 a very superficial thing. Like I went and saw Sucker Punch uh, when Why? exactly. <laughs> I went for the well, visuals. I went for the visuals because okay. that's all. Say, I was going to say, oh wait, you're a guy. Never mind. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the, no the thing is, I was like, well, my personal belief is Zack Snyder is a good director. He just can't write for shit. Uh, but the thing is, I went and saw Sucker Punch. I saw that in IMAX 3D. Now visually, it was awesome. The rest of it, I I was bored with. It was mm-hmm. it was just a stupid movie for me. And it goes to the fact of the matter is that 3D will will not save a movie that is lacking in other categories. Oh, right. No, I agree. That's not what I'm saying. I'm but saying it can enhance an already good movie. The, no. no. The thing is, it, like, it, it really, you really have to show me something that would really convince me of that because I have not seen, I have not been in a 3D experience yet that I will say that 3D helped along that movie. I, uh, one movie that, uh, I ended up uh, seeing in 3D. Uh, I ended up seeing The Dark Knight uh, twice. I ended up seeing once in IMAX when it was not in 3D, which mm-hmm. was an amazing experience because mm-hmm. The Dark Knight in IMAX is an amazing movie. But the thing is, I saw it in 3D as well, and to be honest, I couldn't stand it in 3D because I'm like, uh, even if it was, even if there were certain scenes in the movie that were actually purposely shot for 3D portions, they and it was, it, but the thing is, at the same time, if it was used to enhance the movie. I it, it annoyed the fuck out of me yeah. because all I was just trying, all I was getting from 3D I'm like you're trying you're actively trying to get me engrossed in the movie instead of doing it in subtle ways like I watched uh, one of the one movie that's one hell of a visual experience and and I've heard people say that you know it would be amazing in 3D is uh, Gaspar Noise Enter the Void and mm-hmm. that one is all about the visuals and yeah. whatnot if you threw that in 3D I would get fucking fed up with the movie. It's not the movie itself. I think that movie is amazing and what the way it is, but the fact of the matter is you get lost in it because of the way it is. 
if it's just thrown into 3D, then I'm like, you're act, you can, t you, you have a sense of that the director or the, the people behind it are actively trying to get you drawn in, except instead of subtly doing it, and then you get lost in the movie on your own. Yeah. It becomes, it actually becomes almost like you're fighting the people who made the movie in a way. Uh, Avatar is a really great. I was going to say Avatar is the best one because mm -hmm. it's beautiful and it's visually like stunning. The, the story shit and boring. And the fact, if you watched it with it's Pocahontas. Well, yeah, I was gonna say it's Fern Gully those, with mech suits. If you did not watch it with <laughs> the, the 3D or the IMAX, I fell asleep. I fell asleep. It was boring. Our viewers have commentary agreeing with us. It's boring. See, Emily agrees about the 3D is a problem, and uh, and Kelly, our vice president, also agrees about poor sound design. Um, when it comes down to Avatar and the 3D, though, the thing is, though, Avatar would not have made any of... If it was not released in 3D... Oh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the number one no, whatever 83%, 83 fucking percent of its revenue came from 3D theaters. If it was only released 3D in 2D... 3D IMAX. Yeah, 3D IMAX. If it was so much more yeah, than it, just the regular Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and, and like, that's a new... Th and that's another toy is, is you know, the IMAX. Which right. I... I... I don't care for this whole like, well, 3D is going to be the. I'm like, no, it, no. it shouldn't be because it's bullshit. No, I don't. And, no, and, my, and people and like, I don't want to. I don't care about the 3D. I care about if the movie's good. Yeah. People right. are like, well, it's in yeah. 3D. I'm like, who gives a shit? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. the IMAX, I can push. I would rather push toward because I think it's more. There's more of a stylistic yeah. myth with the camera itself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and the look of the like cinematography and the look of it, which right. can help. And and most of the stuff that's in IMAX, like I saw Prometheus in IMAX, and what I thought that? that was great. I know some people have problems with. I liked the movie. Okay. Um, and and I still have and in IMAX, I thought it, it was amazing. <laughs> um, but that's something I would push toward. If but that's so that's good. involved with the cinematography. That's cinematography. See, three D, three D, like especially yeah. uh, only up until recently and whatnot, because of like you know innovators like James Cameron and whatnot. I do not deny that James Cameron is one hell of an innovator when it comes down to, to film and whatnot. Mm -hmm. He he has made so many great advances in the world of filmmaking that he actually, in a way, has earned his like six doctorates for yeah. filmmaking and whatnot. But at the same time, but he's not. But he but. And his category of the movies he's made, half the movies he's made are bullshit, except for like the Terminator 2, the Terminator, Aliens. Terminator, Terminator 2, Aliens, and The Abyss. Those are my favorite movies from Out James of, Cameron. But we think yeah. of Avatar, and then all right. he wants to do is... And re-releasing Titanic in 3D. Yeah, and shit like right. That, right. Was and that, and that I hate and Titanic. That, I think <laughs> where the line is, is when you try to take films and... Staple put match 3D the 3D to them. on it, and then and then on top of that, he right. wants to make sequels to Avatar. He's only uh, making right. sequels and to Avatar, only, and I'm like, excuse yeah, me. He closed <laughs> down his production company. He's only making and Avatar sequels for the rest which, of his life. And which is, I was like, okay, how greedy are you? It's like, right, exactly. I love. Oh, I love the fact that during the Oscars that year, when Catherine Bigelow, his ex-wife, oh, won shit. Best Director, I'm like, yeah, James Cameron's crying. <laughs> He's crying all the way to the bank. To the bank. And whatnot. Like, this guy made $2 billion off of this movie. This guy has the personal wealth of a small country. And... He could get us out of debt. He He's could. He out of debt if he'd like. If he donated James all the proceeds. James Cameron 2016. <laughs> And I'm the only one who got that reference. No, I got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got it too. I just laughed. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> but I got it. I 2016, it James Cameron's America. Um, Wait until the person from 2017 listens to this podcast. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Next Let, topic. Let's go on. Um, I could rant about 3D so, all goddamn day. <laughs> we were these, each of these points we could have made their own separate podcasts for. I, I know, honestly. We I can. Like I mean, we we, have, these are all complete it's conversations. It's too late for that. So. The, the next, <laughs> keep going. The yeah. next one is spoiler-filled trailers. Now, and I, I definitely agree with this topic so much because yeah. there is so much. There's so many times where it, if you watch a trailer nowadays. I can just sit there and I'll be like, hmm, let's I'm see. Let's see who gets together in this film. Right, but let's let's see, that girl but and that guy. That's the consumer's fault. We won't no, go to no, it's not. No, no, it's not. It's 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 what, let me explain. We won't go to see a movie. Well, the masses won't go to see a movie unless the trailer 
is interesting and exciting. And just so happens... But you don't have to give away plot points. It just so happens that the interesting and exciting bits happen at the end of the movie. But but you can, yeah, you but can, you make, can show you can, parts without giving away I'm sure you can take any movie and Actually, take the first two-thirds and you can find a way right, to but make I'm just saying a lot of it is lazy consumers who want to Here. know what they're getting before they get it. Now, when it comes down to trailers, I have a really strict philosophy when it comes I, to it. I love... I that entirely. I love trailers and whatnot because also I have a lot of respect for people who can, who can make trailers because... These people have sometimes have to make a bad movie look good, and uh, but sometimes you, like when you get people How do you who are really the room? Yeah, like, <laughs> people who get really creative uh, with making trailers. Like, I actually, to be honest, one of the best trailers that I saw actually didn't even show any parts of the movie, and that actually would help drive it. Um, I'm not a fan of Paranormal Activity. I think it was a boring movie. But the first trailer they released for Paranormal Activity was simply the audience reactions yeah. to the movie. And, uh, I that, that was so very much. well done. You yeah. didn't even have to see any part of the movie to be interested in yeah. it. And, like, and that was the hallmark of someone who was really good with making trailers. Now, I think one of the worst trailers out there was, say, the trailer for Cabin in the Woods, which literally reveals half the plot points of the movie in there. If you go in to see the movie completely blind, You'll even if you don't, like, no, even if you don't like the movie and whatnot, I'm not going to give any spoilers for that movie because, like, you know, it's a movie that you have to watch without reading into it at all. If you go into that movie completely blind, you're a lot more, uh, Lost in, like, you're a lot more taken in by the movie and its twists and all that kind of stuff and its hilarity and all that jazz, because that you're 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 going into that without it. The trailer literally gives away the entire set up for the movie, and you have you have no uh, anticipation. Now the way that it ends, the way that it goes is different, but at the same time, you're almost like you're. Especially the way that it was built up, that the hype it was given, you were expecting a lot more of an insane twist than it was given. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it wasn't effective in its own right to the way it was trying to do, but at the same time, you know, it, it, it ruined a lot of the the more clever elements of the movie. Um, he pretty much said it, um, but Matt, I was just saying like a direct, mm, a trailer should not have a direct structure. That's pretty much it yeah well well and, and yeah that that's a great point because like i'm they're just for example when spider-man 2 came out um i remember barely a week the, like, the, like the week of its release they released a trailer showing him revealing Man, himself Oh yeah, I as remember Peter that. to Mary Jane hey, I remember on a that. tv yeah. on a tv promo and i just stared at the screen for like I a minute that. i was like whoever didn't go see the movie you don't no know what you now. Yeah. Aren't you happy? That's great. You just, you just saved me movie. eleven dollars. <laughs> oh, and it's one, it's one thing I love to do is anytime like I like get a DVD of a movie to then like after watching the movie to maybe watch the trailer and see okay how much of this stuff did they spoil in the trailer? <laughs> like a good example of, of this for, for me a few weeks ago was uh, the movie Vantage Point. Oh, they, yeah. they really, they literally spoil like every plot twist in the trailer. <laughs> and that's another thing too. Also, it's not trailers that go on for too goddamn long. Yes. Because yeah. like, the thing oh, is, Cloud Atlas, five minutes. I still don't want to see the fucking movie. I do. I, mean, I do. Like, you know, I also like, really want to see the movie. The main but, reason I want to see Cloud Atlas is because Tom Twinkfer is doing, uh, is co-directing the movie, and he did Run Lola Run and Perfume. Oh, I know, but the Wachowskis well, have done it, and I've seen half their movies, and. Well, they, they have only they have like the, two good ones out of like the five. Right. And well, they have, no, they only have four. And four. Yeah, the Matrix movies and uh, Speed Racer. No, there's more. They're, they wrote V for Vendetta, but they didn't direct no, it. No, not that one. It's Bound. I think it's. I um I, I on their IMDb they only have four. I do agree <laughs> on the the long trailer is horrible. If you ever see an extended trailer release on like IMDb, I say if you're excited about a movie. I say avoid it yeah. because well, like the girl with the dragon tattoo, right, the girl with the right, dragon tattoo yeah. had like a four and a half minute long trailer. That, I'm like, that's, that's not necessary. Well, the first one was good. It was a, it was one minute long and it was only like really shots well, it, that you weren't aware of. Well, it, well, it got you interested. It was just the music. Yeah. It was just the song. Yeah, um, like yeah, the for that, song like, and it's, the and it's bad. Attached. Like I was gonna say, I. Uh, seen the original Girl of the Dragon mm -hmm. Tattoo and I saw that five minute I go, okay, I've seen the, the entire movie. I've seen the entire movie. <laughs> yeah. I've, I already I enjoyed know the movie and the book. Yeah. Okay, but, but that's when not, you, that's but not when you see here. but when you see the, the trailer, you're like, this this is it. Like yeah, this and for is somebody that already right. knows what's gonna happen and they're right. excited, then when you see it you're like 
Well, I guess I don't have to see it because they gave me a five minute trailer. The entire <laughs> it was also like the trailer of Let Me In, the American remake of Let the Right One In. It literally gives away so much of the damn, of the damn movie in, 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 in the trailer. Like, I haven't actually actually seen Let Me In. I, I kind of refuse to because I think Matt Reeves is a bad director and I don't... You don't screw with Let the Right One it's In. Okay. It's, a, it's an amazing You hear that, Matt Reeves? You're a bad, bad director. I mean, I, no, I don't think that... I, I, I've heard things about like the movie being like good and whatnot. I don't have a problem with that, but at the same time... like. Also, from the things I've read about it, it ruins tons of the actual there's subtle just, subtext in there's it. There's just no cat scene. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, to, sorry, to go back to what we talked about, the trailers, um, I usually, I, I try not to watch trailers anymore, unless it's like something, you know, unless it's like something. I mean, I got really excited when I saw the next Hobbit trailer when it came out. Yeah. I was really excited when I, mean, I saw that. Like, if you I know, mean, like, 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 like. People like who know what the Hobbit's about and stuff. If you see the trailer, like you kind of already know what the storyline's going to happen. So uh, now, them? see my it's now, a fantastic journey. Now, my view on like the Hobbit, for example, I I love Lord of the Rings. I never read um, any of the books. I tried and they're it not failed. very good. And um and I never read the Hobbit. So I don't. Uh, but I know the Hobbit's idea good. of the yeah. story behind it. The Hobbit but, is the best but, book. Okay, okay, and and that that Second might be is. that might be accurate. You know, oh, I, I don't know it that. But it's see, before J.R. Tolkien realized how good he was. And see, but here's my view: is that I saw that first trailer that they first you mm-hmm. know to promo it, and that got me really excited. Yeah. From this point on. I'm not watching anything else until I watch the movie because mm-hmm. I, don't, to be honest, I don't want to be. I don't want to. Well, I've adopted you that have strategy. Three, a bunch of three trailer movies, so you only got like the first whatever. But like, right. uh, like I have problems with. There's certain movies. There's ones that there's certain trailers where there's ones that they spoil too much, and then there's ones where it's you know it's going to be bad because they put all of the the like funny scenes in it, right. and then you're like, wait, what happened to the rest of it? Right. It, it, and a really good example of that is the trailer for the remake of Fun with Dick and Jane. I think any uh, comedy yeah. movie, yeah, any comedy movie trailer, basically. Seventy five percent all ruin, your comedy is plot. in it. Like the yeah, hangover. Yeah. Like when the hangover, everybody wanted to see yeah. the hangover because but then when you watch the hangover, every <laughs> single scene's in it and they spoiled the, like the Mike Tyson mm-hmm. scene with the hangover, they put that in the trailer. If they were smart, they wouldn't have put it in yeah, the and trailer. Then everyone and, reacted and then everyone would have reacted. And then it would have been better. Exactly. And then everybody had been talking about, Oh my god, you gotta see this movie, Mike Tyson there's this huge ass funny scene with Mike Tyson. So right. when you watch it for a movie experience, when you want to see something the first time, it takes it away because you're like, uh, "Well, I've already seen this in the right. trailer." Oh, is this one Mike Tyson is right. in? Is this one Mike exactly. Tyson is in? You're yeah. waiting, you're for, waiting the scene. for it, yeah. and it's just like, mm-hmm. well, then you kind of it's just like it it, it would have been better the first time you see it without those spoilers. Maybe one or two, but they should put. You know, I understand the advertising, but it's still not right. Right, and and also just to add on to that is like. When I went saw the first Iron Man film, mm-hmm. you know everybody loves oh, that does. scene. Yeah. Loves that scene where he shoots the rocket, and, turns yeah. around, and and walks tank. towards the camera, and the tank explodes. Fine. I watched it in the movie. I was like, I've seen this five thousand well, like, times. Well, if you're gonna put a scene like, like that, you better have a, an but awesome still. backup scene that you don't show. Well, I did. Right. To put in there. Well, like, well yeah. Go, go, you know what's really annoying is when. There's like a scene that's overplayed in trailers, and then when you get to the movie, it's people still laugh it. at it. Oh, oh, okay. That, well, well, but I think you actually want to see the context in which that scene is being played sometimes. Because I, I do know that. But it's like, it is, like, for example, for Ted, they always play it for the, the, uh, Red Band version of yeah, trailer yeah, for like Ted. They did that. They yeah. did that scene where they count down all the women's names yeah, and all yeah. that. I, I, I wanted to see that in the film. You know, I was, I was thought found that funny. Now, what I do hate is when they show you something in the trailer that you think is really awesome, yeah. and then they cut it from the film. Yeah, the, yeah. Se- the sequel to Sherlock Holmes. There is that one scene where Sherlock I Holmes still seen that. I is, dre- is dressed up um, like a woman. Yeah, and um, you know him and Watson are like this close to each other, I and Holmes it was has in the like movie. no, it wasn't, okay. and that and that's what and that's what got me in the movie. I was like, you're waiting. Are for you it kidding? Because the whole when they did the first movie, the whole back and forth funny line they showed in the trailer was get that thing out out of my out of my face. Mm-hmm. It's not in your face. It's in my hand. Gets what in your hand out of my face. Now in the sequel, they showed a in the trailer they showed a scene where they say the same dialogue, but it's, but it's the opposite person saying each line and when that scene finally arrived 
You were they like, skipped what? right over it. And I was like, well, to be fair, that that is perhaps a thing that is better suited for a trailer than for actual inclusion in the movie. No, because you're you're <laughs> deceiving your audience. You're when it comes down to deceiving the audience and whatnot, that also leads me into bad trailers. When it comes down to the trailers right. alluding to the fact, like. Uh, I think probably one of the worst trailers I ever saw was the trailer for the movie The Rules of Attraction by Roger Avery. Yeah, that trailer has absolutely nothing to do with the movie oh, yeah. didn't, whatsoever. I didn't, I, you showed that to us. It actually, actually, it had one award for the, the the trashiest trailer and whatnot. It literally turned a, a story that was written by Brett Easton Ellis, who was the writer of American Psycho and The Informers and whatnot. The Informers wasn't a good movie either, but go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, but like, well, the thing is, like, it, it was, and it's a thing. But the uh, the trailer itself, it, it like turns it into something that looks like it was trying to be like American Pie or something like, like that. The, yeah. the thing is though, people like want to blame like the director or something for a trailer, and no, what people need to know is studio. that no, it's not the studio; it's the it's, uh, the company that the studio hires yeah. to cut the trailer. Yeah, the trailer is completely done by someone even uh, completely opposite, even from the distributors. Yeah. What Although, they do is they show the movie to the person, that company, who's yeah. going to edit it, and then they take it and edit it. Now, they might get, like, notes from, like, the studio or those yeah. executives that only do it because they need marketing. So it, some of that stuff is just in there for marketing. or they. But that's a problem, too, with, with trailers where you think you're going in to see one movie, and then you watch right. the movie, and you're like, that wasn't the movie that they portrayed. Now, sometimes right. that can be a good thing, and that can be a bad thing. Like you said, like... like Cabin in the Woods, for example. If somebody doesn't really know it, they could be thinking they're going into a, a, a straight-up horror movie. Are you and telling then me it's not? It, it's, it's a comedy horror. It's a sad horror. Horror. But I think, like, a good, film. like, example of, like, a, a trail, like, The Avengers. Like, that was, a, like, those trailers were really fun. They, they didn't give away everything. Like, there were so many awesome scenes, and that could just be from just But, Reed. of course... But it, they had that, they the, had that the one... The big scene. That, the big one, ending that ending. one ending of it where... Of the trailer where you yeah. see that, that turn and you see everybody and the Hulk and everything. Now, they did get, like, the whole... The one problem they had was with the Hulk saving Iron Man. They mm-hmm. should have kept, kept it. Just kept it with that, but... That's kind of a big scene in there because it, it like grabs everybody's attention and then it makes everybody excited. Right. But they didn't fuck it up, you know, with like putting <laughs> everything in and, and like the mm. all, the coolest scene that I like is at the very end where they're all like standing down looking at Loki. Spoiler. But <laughs> um Right. The, the, so yeah, they didn't give away they, that. That was cool like show. a really Demigod. good right. that was a really good trailer because it got people excited, mm-hmm. it showed them just enough, and then they show that badass circle, you know, And there were a lot of shot. moments in the Avengers. Oh, and that, there's so many more of, yeah, because, so many more that they didn't because show. they were unexpected. There's an actual reason for that. Uh, I, I, I saw an interview with Joss Whedon uh, basically saying that uh, he had like overall extreme control over a lot of the the, yeah. the promotional material and whatnot. So actually, the trailers, all that were released for the Avengers, all had Joss Whedon's seal of approval. And sometimes I think that would be best with some of the, some things like of how they're portrayed. Like mm-hmm. depending, I mean, sometimes they try and make a movie seem awesome, and then when you see like the like with the trailer, and yeah. you see, it and you're like, oh, this was shit. Why did I go and see it? The trailer looks so good. But that actually mean that, that that's a hallmark to how did, good they, they were. They did their job, yeah. but then they slacked off mm-hmm. in actually making the movie itself. But yeah. I mean, we can but that's no fault of the yeah. trailers, yeah. though. I guess we should do the next one. <laughs> okay. What number are we um, on again? Okay, everybody. I think that's it for today. We're going to uh, continue with our list next week. Um, so, uh, thanks to everybody for joining us. Remember to follow us on Twitter and on our YouTube. Uh, both of those usernames are UMBCFA. Twitter is at UMBCFA. And find us on Facebook, UMBC's Filmmakers Anonymous. Thanks for joining us. Come on, come on. We're fun at Filmmakers Anonymous. What's her name again? We're Filmmakers Anonymous. So come to our film club and don't go to class. Doesn't matter anyway, cause you shall not pass!